Hey guys, time for some more Community StarCraft 2. I'm your host, Magnet, and today's video we're going to be looking at harassment openers in TVZ. And this is super common in this matchup. You're going to see it in probably 80 to 90% of professional games, but I thought I would take some time to outline different options that you can use and kind of explain the whole idea behind the opener. The opener typically starts with Reapers, goes into Hellions, and sometimes into Banshees. But we'll take a look at a bunch of different games and kind of show you what these uh, players are trying to do with this. So, let's go ahead and jump in here. We're going to be taking a look at Polt versus Shigwa. And you can turn on the music here so we have a little bit of background, you know, noise or whatever. Um, so, it's going to be pretty normal stuff here. And Reaper openers are very common. They're just 12 barracks and 12 gas after your depot in normal time, which is 10. So depot comes down here, we're going to see Polt put down the barracks and the gas on the same supply. So 12 supplies when the barracks goes down, and he saves up for a little bit, puts down the gas on 12, and then restarts SCVs. So from here, he's just going to want to try to get a Reaper out. And the ver number of Reapers can be variable. Usually people will go for two, sometimes it's three, very rarely is it more or less than that. So. Um, yeah, that's just kind of a more stable number to keep the pressure on a little bit. You can keep them alive in case you accidentally lose one. Um, and you don't want to make too many because you eventually need to transition and get a command center. Part of this is also to secure your command center. So the first Reaper is going to come out, second Reaper is on its way. And as soon as this second depot is built, most pros will just send their SCV down to start the uh, command center right away. And the reasoning here is that the Reaper is going to keep them busy for quite a while. And it can kill Zerglings, it can kind of keep them pinned in your base while you're building your command center. That's the whole idea behind this opener. So this isn't like a sort of a cheesy build where you need to kill a whole bunch. This is mostly just to keep the Zerg back in their base for long enough to uh, get your own bases up and running. So Reaper is going to come up here and back in the Zerg base. I mean they can figure this is coming so Zerglings should be on the way and more than likely finish right when you get there. Um, there's some other timings we have to pay attention to, but they've been covered already in the last video I did, which is, uh, you know, dealing with cheese in this matchup, so you should be all accustomed to that. And there's a second Reaper on the way, and a third Reaper in production. So this is going to be three re Reapers from Polt. As soon as you have 100 gas, that's when you're going to drop your factory most of the time. Not sure why Polt opted to not do that. It's probably going to be for a third command center. No, never mind. He just decides to go ahead and make the factory. So after this, you're going to follow this up with Hellions. And by this stage, uh, you shouldn't expect to really kill drones here. I mean, if you can, if you can really up micro your opponent and get him to mess up with these Zerglings or something, then you can kill drones. Um, but don't get too eager, and more importantly, don't lose these guys. These, these Reapers are really your sustained scouting, and the thing that's going to pin them in their base for the longest. So, Pult has a third command center on the way, which is pretty normal, and it's usually going to be determined based upon what you scout with these Reapers. One way you can check, which we've covered a lot, is whether they're still mining gas or not, and if you can see any other types of tech, or if you see more drones rallying out of these eggs, then that's a good sign that you can take a third base. Um, the other thing that you're going to want to do with these harass harassment openers is kill the creep tumors that start being planted by these queens because you want to try to delay their third base for as long as possible while having information as far as what they're doing. So if you see a whole bunch of roaches or a huge amount of zerglings or something then you're obviously going to want to go home and defend that. So now that's part of the point of this. So back home, once the third reaper is done, Pult's going to start a reactor, or at least he should. It wouldn't make much sense to do anything else. He starts a reactor. He's actually keeping the Reaper home. I don't know if that's intentional or not. Um, he may have had a rally to one of his other Reapers, and that Reaper might have died. So I think that's what's going on here. So, uh, now Pult just trying to get into the next stage of this, which is Hellions. You're usually only going to want to do about six to maybe eight Hellions to follow this up. So we'll keep going with this. One thing I would really like to encourage you guys to do is once you have. Once, they, once they've planted a couple of creep tumors is about when they're going to start getting a little more interested in taking their third base. So, I mean, you can do all this. You can try to kill Zerglings, but ultimately this is really not doing that much. Um, if you can just deny any drones coming down here, maybe sit one of your Reapers here and just kill a drone or block it from putting a hatchery down, that's going to help out a lot, and I don't see a lot of people doing that. 
Um, and I'm not sure why, especially if you have three Reapers, you can keep two somewhere around here if you don't lose one of them, and then just keep the third Reaper sitting right here and block that if they try to take that hatchery. So that's really annoying for a Zerg to deal with because Queens are going to take forever to get over there. And uh, granted, they could stop it with Zergling speed, but I mean, uh, you should know what those timings are and be able to get your Reaper out of there if they decide to run over. But most of these openers are going to be about how much you can do versus the APM of your opponent. So if you have a lot of APM and you can use it and keep up on everything you need to do back at home while keeping these Reapers active, and your opponent can't do that, that's the perfect way you're just going to flat out get ahead in most of these games. So we'll just keep going here. The Hellions are being rallied together now, and the Tech Lab is producing a Barracks, or rather the Barracks is producing a Tech Lab on the other side. The next determination, once you start getting your Hellions going, is whether you're going to spend your next little couple hundred gas on Banshees or on Stim. And in Pult's case, this looks a lot like Stim, considering there is no Starport started. So after this is when you're going to want to get into the next phase of the game. And like I said, these are harassment openers in the sense that you need to give them a reason to make them stay home. But secondarily, um, they're also a measure of... Uh, uh, they can be a measure of killing drones if you get the right opportunities. You obviously can't th just throw these away for no reason. So that's one thing you need to be careful of. So. I do call them harassment openers, but they are really standard for a reason, and that reason is just to keep the Zerg in their base. Maybe you can kill quite a bit if they mess up a little bit, so uh, Pult's just going to keep rallying up Hellions, and right now we can check the unit count, he's only at four, so six and s or five and six are on their way, and I think he might go up to eight, but starting Stim behind this, you're going to notice that for most of the time he doesn't really have much at home. He is completing his wall here so that he can hold off any, any of these annoying Zergling counter attacks. So, and the first couple of, of Marines are out. If there wasn't a wall here, he would take a lot of damage, so that's a really important factor to this. The uh, Hellions and Reapers over on the other side trying to get some damage done to this base. Usually won't be able to cancel this, but sometimes it's worth it if they don't have a lot of Queens out. So that's, I mean, that's obviously not costing him anything if he just sits in there for the time being and then runs them away when they get attacked. Once these, uh, once their sixth Hellion rallies up here is about when you're going to start being a little bit more aggressive. Uh, this is when you can start looking for opportunities to run into their base. Maybe you can kill a queen like we're seeing here. And especially with Banshees, if you can kill queens at this stage, then the Banshee transition is going to be a lot stronger. So in this case, uh, Pult's just looking around for a good opportunity to run back into the main. And uh, Shigua obviously doing pretty well with the queens and keeping them active and around the map. In the meantime, Pult's landed his third, so I mean, he's basically taken these two bases with no pressure, only because he's chosen to be the aggressor during most of this. And all he's doing is just going back and forth with these, he'll, he'll shoot a little bit here, see what he can get, go back around here, see what he can get, and if the Zerg is slacking on moving their queens around, or if they don't have enough units to stop this, then you can maybe get in there and kill a lot of drones basically for free. So that's why it's all about how much APM do you have versus how much APM does your opponent have and how well can you spend that. So, by this point, I mean, the harassment stage is basically ended. There's going to be mutalisks and a lot of zerglings and stuff on the field soon. So even though this didn't do a lot in terms of killing things, um, it did do a lot in, in the sense of giving Pult a little bit of a leg up in this game. So this is how you're going to see a lot of these games open up. It doesn't seem very eventful, but Pult has a f basically th free third base, Stim is done, Medivacs are on the way, and then once your first two medevacs finish, you can combine your forces that were out on the map with your marines and whatever else you might be creating back at home and make a little bit of an attack timing. And again, this puts the pressure on them in the sense that if they mess up, they could lose a lot or die to that. And before the marines come out, you could get some fortunate attacks with these banelings right here, as Shiba does have them rallied kind of strangely, so it kills all the banelings. Now the marines are walking across the field, the medevacs are boosting to catch up, and if the zerg doesn't control this properly, he's just going to flat out die. So. All Paul has to do from here is basically keep his marines alive and keep the aggression going. And if he ever gets into trouble, which you can see the Banelings finishing up, he's going to have to run away and not lose these. The medevacs show up, and there you go. He just gets out. So thus far, he's basically lost his Reapers and Hellions. He's kept the Zerg really busy throughout the game. He's gotten a free third base. He sniped all the Banelings, and he really hasn't lost any more of his long-term units. So the supplies are equal, and from this point, he can play on a pretty normal game. So that's the basis of what this attack is, or rather what the openers are, and what you want to do with them. 
Um, there are a couple of other variations that exist, so let me show you a couple of those so that you can mix those in if you feel you like this style a little bit more uh, rather than not. This time we're going to be watching Maru, and he's fighting Symbol, so we're going to see a different opener. It'll be kind of the same initial concept, but it's going to change a little bit and uh, be f a little more focused around killing drones. So, Maru's obviously spawning up here at the top. And we're just going to watch him open virtually the same way. I mean, Reaper can go into a lot of different things. So he first sends out a scout just to see what's going on. He's actually going to proxy a barracks here. I, I guess I didn't remember exactly what this game was. So this is a little bit of a different harassment opener. This is still just going to be for Reapers, though. I mean, the, the gas was at the same time as the barracks, so the Reapers are just going to come out a little bit faster. Um, there's not a ton that this barracks is doing right now. Maru getting his second depot, and then right after that he should put down his command center, which is really normal for a Reaper, Reaper opener. He's doing this a little different though, he's going to create a bunker and just be a little bit more irritating, so you can kind of vary up your Reaper openers that way. And again, this isn't really about killing drones too much. I mean, occasionally you will kill a couple, but most of the time the Zerg will be able to micro correctly, and as you saw there, Symbol uh, turn one of the drones into a building temporarily and then cancel it just to keep the drone alive. So the Reaper really shouldn't do a ton. The bunker just makes it a lot harder for the Zerglings to uh, commit to trying to kill those Reapers. So, back at home we can see the command center on the way for Maru right now while he continues to be irritating. And, uh, yeah, of course, if you ever need to go back and do something at home, this is also a good way to make sure your Reapers stay alive. You can just jump them in the bunker and then go back home and do something and then come back and push them out of the bunker. So, there's a lot of cool things going on here. And just because of this, he's able to get a couple of kills. Uh, he's able to grab, I think, one Zergling and one drone is all that's gone down so far. But still, this is forcing the Zerg to stay in their base. And more importantly, this is going to be making it really hard for a Zerg to take a third, as long as this bunker is here. So he needs to make a lot more extra Zerglings that he otherwise wouldn't want to make to break this. So that's kind of the idea behind this. And like we've talked about before, the follow-up will be a factory. Of course, the reactor is going to be a little bit later because the barracks is floating home right now and it won't be home for quite a long time. So the factory will have to produce its own reactor. That's a little bit irritating. The bunker has been broken now, so Symbol can go ahead and take his third base. Right around when Zergling Speed is finishing, Maru is just going home with these Reapers because you don't really want to lose them. Um, I mean, you can try and block for a little while, and I, I really mostly suggested blocking uh, their base with a Reaper just because they won't typically have as crisp of speed timings as the pros do. But still, you should be aware, speed finishes up at about 6 minutes most of the time. Depending on how they opened, it's pretty rare for it to finish any earlier than that. So you should at least know that timing is when the Zerg is going to be more interested in taking their third base. So the Reapers went back home, and of course you can't always bring your Reapers back home and just sit them behind a wall if you need to defend against any Zergling counters or anything like that. We've already talked about holding off cheeses and whatnot, so... We won't get too much into that, but that's always an option. So the Hellions are starting now for Maru. It's being a little bit more irritating again with these Reapers, trying to kill a couple of Zerglings and attract them back to the wall where his Hellions can kill them off. And this is the difference this game, is that we're going to see a Starport and a Tech Lab uh, following it up, so we can see Banshees being added into this composition. It's going to be a little bit of a trade-off, because it will delay Stim, considering this gas would usually be used on Stim, but instead it's being used on a Banshee and a uh, cloak. So the idea here is that he's just going to continue the pressure and kind of elongate it with the Banshee and hopefully kill some drones rather than just uh, kind of annoy him with these units. So this is more of a drone killing harassment um, and you don't necessarily have to kill a ton of drones with it but this is the, one of those things that can really get out of control uh, if you control everything properly. That's kind of a weird way to phrase that but it can, it can make it get out of hand for the Zerg if the Terran doesn't make any mistakes, let's put it that way. So Maru is coming back out, uh, down here, and he should be getting these fifth and sixth aliens up here. Three Reapers along with this composition. Again, like we were saying with Banshee openers, if you can weaken or kill some of these queens, it's going to make the Banshee transition a lot better. So uh, we'll see what Maru is able to do with that. Of course, the Zerg will probably be interested in defending this with uh, a lot of Zerglings. And secondarily, if the Zerg tries to defend us, defend us with Roaches, then the Banshee transition is going to be really good. So that's another reason why they mix in these Banshees every once in a while. So uh, Banshees should be... Am I missing my timings here? I'm getting used to playing on Fast Forward. Yeah, here it is. I'm just going to say it should be out by now. 
So the Banshee shows up, and if there's no cloak uh, detection here, then it can pretty much run wild. You probably want to target down these queens with these Banshees if you can help it, but really there's no wrong choices here. And if these, if these queens ever fall, then the Banshee can get a lot of angles on these drones, such as over here where the Spore can't hit it. Maybe you can fly into other bases where it's not covered as well. So the Banshee's just, again, continued harassment, and if the Zerg messes up here, then uh, you can really get a lot done with it. So Kellyan should be trying to target these queens as best they can without getting too surrounded by the Zerglings. And Mike Ring back here, just trying to keep everything alive. That's the whole goal here, just keep this stuff alive. It's not really about killing too much, just keep it alive and keep them busy. And eventually, if you can break him like this, he's going to lose a queen, and then the Banshee can possibly go unchecked. This one's out of cloak energy, but a new one shows up, so he can maybe fly this one home to repair if he really needs to. But now all of a sudden, uh-oh, this is uh, becoming a big problem because there's drones being killed, and that's exactly what this harassment is designed to do. It's just prolong damage until you can get some drone kills and get into a bigger advantage in the game. So because he was able to do that, his Hellions are finally being cleaned up, even though they've killed a lot. The Banshees are still not totally uh, accounted for, but he can send these home and get them repaired if he really wants to. Let's take a look at the game state here. 53 uh, workers for Maro versus 45 for Symbol. And that's pretty good because uh, you can take a third base with this and be ahead on workers at a point where Zerg is supposed to really be ahead on workers throughout the game. Then you can play out a normal game. And to be totally honest, Maro actually just goes with his follow-up push, considering he was getting stim behind this, of course. Uh, since, he's, since he is going to go into bio. So he's just going to follow this up with an attack with a couple of Banshees mixed in and it's just going to kill Symbol. So as long as you can get a lead like that, your next few stages of follow-up attacks are going to become stronger and stronger. So let's take a look at one more harassment opener that's a little different than these two. Um, it'll be, as I remember, opening up pretty much the same way, but we'll show you the difference here. And this opener is better for opening into mech, and we're going to see MVP using this, and MVP was kind of the pioneer of mech back when nobody really used it, so should be pretty interesting to watch. He's of course fighting Firecake, who is notably a very turtly zerg, um, so you'll see him breaking an otherwise very defensive zerg with a nice harassment opener. So MVP is spawning over here on the left, of course. He's going to be taking his uh, depot at a normal time, just like you've always expected. And he should be dropping a barracks for the Reaper, and there we go. And gas should be on the same supply. You can see he just barely started another SCV, putting him at 13. So he'll be going for Reapers, just like we've seen in every other game here. And of course, the reasoning with the Reapers is just to keep him in their base for a little while and uh, not lose any of the Reapers so they can be combined and folded into stronger forces later. Seeing MVP try to scout here, he hasn't seen anything. So now he knows that the Zerg has to either be here, or he can just send his Reaper over here to figure out where he is, and that's what we're seeing. So he trying to kill a drone here, doesn't get too much done. I have actually seen at pro levels that games will just end because they can't deal with the Reapers. So it does happen every once in a while, it's pretty hard to deal with if you have good Reaper control. And again, MVP is going to do three Reapers. The factory is following it up right now, reactor is on the way. And uh, he's going to eventually be going into Hellions like we've always expected. And we're going to see the difference with this build here in just a second. We're going to watch a little bit more harassment. Third command center is on the way once again, which we've seen in basically every game, because he's decided due to the lack of gas mining possibly, due to the lack of units, uh, then he knows he'll, he's safe to take this. So Hellions are on the way right now, and they're going to start getting mixed into the uh, Reaper forces. And this is the difference that we're going to see. There's a second factory on the way, and this is before we would see a starport put down with this gas, but this time this gas is going to go toward a second factory. This second factory is going to be getting a tech lab and the add-on is going to be producing blue flame. So what we're going to see is three factory or three hellion at a time blue flame I guess. It's, it's two factory blue flame but three hellions at a time considering one's on a tech lab and one's on a reactor. And you're going to kind of make this harassment opener look like stuff that Zerg has seen before. So you're going to go with maybe four or six hellions which is really normal. And then you're going to start to stow these up a little bit back at home, and you're going to kind of coax the Zerg into a belief of, yeah, okay, there's not going to be too much here on the field, and this is pretty normal from stuff you've always seen, and then all of a sudden if you show up with another six or seven Hellions and the, they don't prepare for it properly, then all of a sudden they're in a lot of trouble. You'll also note that this Marine killed the Overlord, and I don't think Firecake actually knows about this uh, upgrade that's coming right here. 
I feel like I've talked about this before in another video, and it was in regards to an aggressive mech opener. So this applies to both aggressive mech openers and to this type of harassment opener. You can still go with stim after you've done this, considering you can see that there are uh, there is money available. So you could have a tech lab on here researching stim and be dropping extra barracks once you got your next couple waves of Hellions out, and you could go that route. But this is going to be mixed in for a stim, but I still thought that I would mention that this can be mixed in or this is all going to be mixed in with an, uh, an attack and with mech. But uh, this, this can eventually go into bio, so just be aware of that. So he's going to try and lure him into thinking that this, these are all the Hellions that are out here. This is all it is, and you've seen this a million times, so there's nothing to worry about, and then he's just going to uh, show up with a whole bunch more. As soon as Blue Flame finishes, you can see it's almost done. He's going to send out these extra five or six Hellions, and uh, if he gets good shots on these Zerglings, he can start getting into the drone lines and it'll just become a massacre and get totally out of control. So uh, now that the Blue Flame is done, you can see the Zerglings just totally evaporate to this. So if the Zerg doesn't have roaches or spines or something up, then this is going to be totally uh, out of control here. You can see he's desperately starting spines, but guess what? You have a whole lot of Hellions in your base. This is 15 Hellions with Blue Flame, and if you don't protect these drones properly, you're going to lose basically everything, and that's what we're seeing right now. It's a drone barbecue. So, um, lots more Zerglings desperately trying to come out here, and you're more than okay to trade these Hellions just to get drone kills at this point, considering that's the whole point of the Blue Flame. You don't need to worry too much about keeping these alive, as long as you just don't get them surrounded or do something silly, like throw them away. He's killed so many drones here, this is just an absolute massacre. The only really high drone count that's remaining is over here at the natural, or rather at the third base, but even still, it's like, lol, what are you going to do about this? And it could very easily get out of control, which is what we're seeing here. There's already uh, barely any chance that Fire Cake would have it coming back at this 41 drones killed, and we'll continue to see more here. So, yeah, I thought I would just show you guys some cool harassment openers that are available in this matchup, and we'll just watch this game kind of end here, as uh, fruitlessly these uh, attacks don't really do much from the Zerg. So, yeah, I thought I would just show you guys a few things about what you can do to harass your opponent in TVZ and kind of explain what you're going to see in basically every pro game. Uh, like I mentioned, basically every pro game is going to open up with those Reapers and Hellions and they can either do nothing after that and just go straight into Stim, they can supplement it with Banshee or they can su supplement it with Blue Flame and try to kill drones that way. So try to mix this into your own games and I'm sure you'll have a decent number of or a decent amount of success if you can keep all your stuff alive and if you know how to use it. So. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll be back with more videos, of course, so I'll see you next time.